person stuff, the mistake on the lake, the um, sort of the one of the unintended consequences of Kucinich's, um disastrous two years as mayor was that he and, and, and Brock Weir's disastrous decision to not roll over the notes to put the city into default to punish the Kucinich administration for not selling the, the soon to be bankrupt Cleveland Electric Illuminating Company, Cleveland Public, uh, the, the Municipal Light Company. I mean, Dennis made the right decision, but the consequences, thanks to the business community, were terrible and long lasting. Cleveland got was went into default. Cleveland became a disaster. The Cleveland Trust, Brock Weir's bank, changed its name to Ameritrust because Cleveland was had a very bad name. The bond, as I understand, the bond ratings for Cuyahoga County dropped. The Cleveland Clinic couldn't recruit. Um, and, you know, basically all, everybody was embarrassed. The business community, the political community, it broke the fever of the, of the, of the sixties, of seventies uh, of uh, class warfare, race warfare, um, who's getting what, um, you know, the sort of, there was a sort of circus aspect of politics in Cleveland, um, for a long time. Um, and all of a sudden the music stopped and we were the ones on the floor with no chair. I mean, and everybody was on the floor together. That was a very unique period, and I've seen it drift away over time. But there was a, the group of elected officials at the county, at the city level, um, in the business community, um, had a shared trauma, traumatic experience of going through this and stopped the bullshit for a while, for long enough to actually – do some positive things that so it, began it was, to fall apart, fall apart probably in the latter part of the white administration, but for about 15 years. Um, and certainly with the, the group of councilmen there at the time, the Helen Smith's, Ray Pianca's, Jim Rakakis's, Ed Ripka's, uh, Palencic's the only one left really. Um, Mike White's, um, they all figure, you know, we got to put the swords down. We got to stop fighting. We got to work together. We don't know how to do it, but we got to work together. And that created a, a fundamentally different climate. And in addition, there were a whole lot of people, a lot of most of them in the suburbs, who wanted to do something for Cleveland. This was an era, Steve, before the exurban um, flight had really taken off. When the politics of Northeast Ohio were the politics of Cleveland's Cleveland City Council, that's no longer true. Uh, that politics has moved, the drama has moved from, as you watched, from Cleveland City Council to Noacca because um, people kept moving further up. But 40 years ago, everyone was in, everyone lived in Cuyahoga County who had grown up in Cleveland and still had fond memories, and even people out in Geauga County, like Tony Gall, who was the Geauga County Commissioner, very much in favor of of helping Cleveland out. Now, the Geauga County Commissioners years later were not of the same mind. But in that era, the idea of put some NOACA money into helping us do the uh, do the uh, um, the bridge, uh, the the work on to save the Browns, that was that was possible because people had connections to the city and they wanted to do something for it. So there was a strong effort at volunteerism as well. So the Mayor Mayor Winovich capitalized on something called Operation Move, the Operations Improvement Task Force and other efforts that brought some of this energy. How can we help to, okay, you can help the planning department do this. You can help the CD department. You can help the, the motor vehicle pool Run better, you, you know, if you're running Ohio Bell's motor vehicle pool, come and work with our guys for a month, two months and help us sort it out. We need your help. That was a system That's of, sort lo- of loaned, unique, exec- very- loaned executives. Loaned executives were a key part of that. So it just wasn't the guys that sitting around the table at the union club. It worked its way down. Um, 
and uh, you get a lot of cross tabbing. You had some unique personalities like Ruth Miller, who had been the CD director under Ralph Perk and sort of understood the challenges that bureaucrats are, 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 are dealing with and so could sort of temper some of the enthusiasm. That hadn't happened. After the riots, I am told that there are only a few business people. After the Huff riots and Glenville riots, there are only a few business people like Dick Tullis who ventured into the city to help out. But after default, which was really a very broadly felt um, crisis. Uh, it was the shock that focused everyone's mind. Exactly. It's like, excuse me, you know, stop this. We've got to, if we don't pull together, we're and the other thing we learned, Steve, is that nobody cares. If you want to wallow in failure uh, and, and fight each other tooth and nail, that's fine. That's great soap opera. Nobody cares. That's also, you know, in the context of Ford, Ford to New York City drop dead, you know, that the federal government was no longer going to come and solve the urban crisis. You better figure this out for yourself. Um, and so you got Felix Rohatton to try to sort out, you know, forget our, our, our beam. It's Rohatton comes and sorts out New York. You gotta, you gotta clean your act up. You gotta run a decent business. You gotta get back in the bond market to stop paying people off and being, and doing stupid. It doesn't work anymore. No one's going to help you. And that spirit led to, we gotta figure out ways to work together. We gotta understand how to collaborate. We don't know how to do it. We gotta learn. The and New for York a generation, fiscal... we learned. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, you were for saying. a generation, we, we learned how to collaborate, how to put our swords down, how to stop calling each other names. How to keep, how to stop, um, always put it, putting the, 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 the argument in race, racial terms or class terms or working class, neighbor, downtown versus neighborhoods. I mean, the whole civic vision model was based on, uh, skewering and putting a, putting a dagger through the heart of the downtown versus neighborhood dichotomy that had been used by politicians for generations. I mean, why do you think the wealth left Euclid Avenue? Because, you know, Council drove them out in the early 20th century. That's why they left Cleveland, because you know the council said they're not part of us. We're going to, you know, let's say we'll tax tax John Rockefeller stuff. Um, that class warfare was very very deep, um, and the animosity was very very deep uh, on both sides, on both sides. Um, and this was a shock that put a stop, at least for a generation, at least for about 20, 15 or maybe 20 years, um, until a new crew of politicians came through and, and they reverted to some of the same old, same old. Uh, the, the fiscal crisis in, in New York City, uh, was, was that something that people in Cleveland were uh, talking about at, at the time? I don't think, I mean, I'm a political junkie. I, do, I, I think about it, but I don't think that was um, there, but I think it was very clear under, uh, I mean, that was a Ford administration doing that. And then Carter softened that and started cutting back on funds. The Huff development, which had had its funding uh, from the um, Office of Economic Opportunity, and became a community services administration. We were told in about 77, but 78, money's drying up. Um, right. And then when David Stockman came in and sort of finished the job that, Ray, that Nixon started with a her, the, the, the HUD moratorium, um, there was no more money. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it wasn't so much New York, but the general drift was from the Ford administration forward, and actually going back to Nixon, was we're not subsidizing cities anymore. Right. Um, the politics have been shifting to the suburbs. We're not doing this. Well, um, everything is shifting to the suburbs or beginning to shift at this point, as, as you mentioned, because of uh, suburbanization and the impact of the interstate highway system, right. which people didn't really understand at that time, did they? No, not really. Um and um, it's, it's a combination of the interstate highway system and, and, and 
um, cheap, relatively cheap gas and relatively 